All right, so now that we have the basic idea of logarithms, and we understand that a logarithm is just the opposite of an exponential, so it's just like doing the opposite of addition or multiplication or a squared or anything like that. It's just doing the opposite. Let's see if we can put together some of the logarithm rules. Okay, so the first couple are going to be derived from the idea that exponentials and logarithms are opposites. Now, the exponent rule that most people are familiar with is this one, x to the a times x to the b means that we are going to add the exponents, right? When you multiply things with the same base, you will add the exponents, okay? Now, logarithms being the exact opposite mean that if I am adding logarithms, not if I'm adding a and b, but if I'm adding logarithms, just like you are multiplying exponentials there, then the result will be a times b. You will multiply the arguments, just like you add the exponents here. Okay? Now, the second one is going to be essentially the reverse of that. When you divide, you're going to have x to the a minus b. So it should then follow that if you have log of a minus log of b. Now again, recognize we are subtracting logarithms. This doesn't work if it's just a minus b. But if you are subtracting logarithms, then you may rewrite it as the log of a divided by b. All right, so the next one I'm going to do a little bit of work for. I'm going to show you how this one works. Okay, so let's say for a minute that I had the log, oops, that's not the log, I had the log of a squared. Okay, now this exponent could be any number, but I'm going to show you a squared just because it's the, the easiest to do. Now the log of a squared, I can rewrite as the log of a times a. Now in this step right here, I lear we learned that if we were multiplying them, that we could rewrite it as two separate logs, right? So, well, we learned this way, but obviously backwards works just like it did with the exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this as log of a plus log of a. All right, well, if I have one log of a and I add another log of a, how many log of a's do I have? Well, I have two log of a. And so you'll notice that the exponent, which was the exponent of the a, is now in front of the log a. Now, that will work for any exponent, because if you had a to the third power, it would be a times a times a, which means you would have log a plus log a plus log a, which means you would have three log a's. Okay, so no matter what, you're going to end up with this rule that tells you that log of a to the n is equal to n times the log of a. And so anytime you have an exponent, it can be brought in front of the logarithm. All right? Uh, the other rule that you need to know is the change of base rule. And this is this, that the log base b of a can be changed to any base that you want. Now, this will be helpful in some of your homework problems and reasoning. Uh, your calculators will actually do this for you now. The TI-84, the TI-84s do, but um, I'm still going to show you the rule anyway, just because it may be helpful as we're doing some of this math. So uh, let me just rewrite that last one. Sorry. So log c of b. So this letter c can be anything you want it to be. In some cases, we'll choose a different number for it. We'll we'll want a specific base, and so we'll do it that way. In some cases, we'll just make it 10 because your calculator does log base 10 very easily. But note that the big number is on the top, and the base of the log is on the bottom. Okay, the a and the b are both arguments, and then the c is the the new base that you've created, whatever base you want. Okay. Now the last thing that I want to show you right now is hopefully two things, is, is this right here. We talked about the fact that if I had a to the x power equals b, that I could take the log of both sides. And so I could write log base a, and I could write log base a, and that then these two would cancel out the logarithm and the exponential, leaving me with x equals log 
base a to the b. Now that, how, that works because the logarithm and the exponential are inverses. This also works if I had had something like this, a times log base a to the x equals b, then in that case, the a and the log base a, because those two functions are inverses, will cancel out, leaving me with x equals b. Now, this is helpful because, for example, if I had the logarithm of 3 times x equals 2, then what we can do is we can get rid of the logarithm by doing the opposite. And the opposite of a logarithm is an exponential. So we can create this as an exponential. So we'll go 3 to the power of log base 3x equals 3 to the power of 2. And so then what you'll notice is that the 3 and the log base 3 cancel out, leaving us with x equals 3 to the power of 2 which then, of course, is x equals 9. Okay. The last thing that you really need to know about logarithms and logarithm rules is, of course, natural log. Natural log is just log base e. And we've talked about this in class, that e is just another number. e is 2.717, blah, 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 right? And so this is exactly the same as if it said log base 2.71, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And when you see natural log, know that it's just going to follow the rules of all the other logarithms. I didn't put any bases here, which means it's the common logarithm, base 10. But this works for any base. Okay, even base e. So if you had natural log of a plus natural log of b, it would equal the natural log of a times b. It will follow the same rules as everything else. So hopefully this is helpful for you and that it'll, it'll help you to be able to answer some of these and uh, that it'll give you a good introduction to logarithms. Ciao.